Hello and welcome. This is Darius Barasande, host of the U.S. Revolution. And if you're about to watch this amazing session that we did, then you're part of a group of humans on this planet who are ascending and moving into a higher frequency. You're not here by accident, and I'd like to offer you a special gift that will help you to adjust to some of these frequencies, plug in even deeper, and it's an energy activation MP3 that will double the power of your energy field in less than 57 seconds. It's absolutely free, and it's the first link in the description down below, but it's also going to let you get to hear calls like this one live and get daily help from healers, teachers, and masters all over the world. It's absolutely free and it's part of what we're doing every day at UAuth Revolution. So if you feel called in your heart, you can click the link down below and the special session that you wanted to watch and experience will start right now. <laughs> I'd like to start with perhaps a state of the ascension, <laughs> which is, you know, share with us kind of where where we are in this human evolutionary timeline from your perspective and, and what's happening and what's, what may be happening next. Okay, I would be happy to. And that's a lot to answer, isn't it? <laughs> because we are yeah. going through so many changes. And um, what we're seeing in the world today as we're shifting from the old, what I call the old earth energies into the new earth energies is a series of breakdowns of the, the old established uh, paradigms of what life is, what, what, you know, what life looks like, the support systems around us, you know, and all the classical societal supports, you know, the, the governments and the, the education and the medical systems, they're, they're yeah. all kind of stuck in the old energy and in order for us all to move into this new earth um, everything's got to be what I would call repatterned. It's not that they're being destroyed completely and going away it's, but it's just it looks so chaotic because it has to be shaken up. It has to be repatterned and I always like to say that chaos is order reorganizing. So whenever we're in a period of chaos, whether it's in the world or our life, it is actually just a, a pattern, repatterning that is necessary for us to open up to our next greatest potential. So even though it looks ugly out there, you know, we can smile through it. Yes. I mean, it's hard sometimes. <laughs> we kind of wonder, can it get any worse? But just knowing that this is not destruction, this is repatterning that's going on. And that can give you the, the kind of eyesight into that situation, the view from the forest, you know, over the trees, of what's really happening. It, and it's what it is, is greater things to come. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because, you know, I was reading a little bit about your story. It seems like you had a repatterning as well, leaving corporate America with several significant spiritual events. Tell mm -hmm. us what happened. Take us back into that time. Okay. Well, I, I have to say that um, and when I first came into the world, when I was very young, first five years, um, I was still extremely connected to Source. Mm -hmm. And I was already aware of my spirit and God, and I grew up in a Catholic, uh, you know, background, so I was I was aware of Jesus. In fact, I, at five years old, thought Jesus was my best friend. And so, um, wow. but this kind of disturbed my family, um, who just didn't know what to do with this, you know, little girl who's, you know, talking about God and Jesus in a totally different way. And so my soul decided that it wasn't safe enough uh, for me to, you know, carry this as openly as I was, and so I was kind of, uh, the veil kind of dropped down and I was kind of closed off from my connection to the source as I had uh, come in. And so uh, this kind of left a, a really big hole in my heart. I didn't know that at the time, you know, as I was growing up, but, um, but it did lead me to um, try to fill that absence of that, you know, of what I knew, which was this, you know, I was, you know, with God, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, and now I'm kind of in the abyss and, and life, and it's hard, you know, life is hard. And so I, um, I got overcompensated and tried to fill it, you know, through my life with career and success and, you know, all those things that we think are what make us, 
and what Correct. will satisfy us. But of course, we know that does not really fill the hole because it, it's not. There's no material or uh, emotional um, success that can fill that love. And in fact, it's really the love for yourself that you, you need to fill. But you know, especially you know, in the times before 2000, uh, people gr- you know, growing up, you never even heard of spirituality or talked like we are talking today. Exactly. You know, there was nobody you knew that was yearning for something different or couldn't figure out life. You know, it, you kind of mm. felt very alone. And so I dove into. Um, corporate success and worked my way up uh, through Boeing helicopters and other companies um, to get to the top, and I did. And uh, what I found was, Darius, was I was more miserable there than I was down at the bottom, <laughs> and nothing seemed to fill me. And so um, when I was 28, in the middle of all this success, um, I was diagnosed with a mass that was between my inner ear and my brain that was growing and would eventually push into the, my brain. So I had, it was a very serious operation to have it removed. And after I went through that, you know, kind of harrowing, you know, period of time, that's when my spiritual gifts started, uh, I created an opening for my spiritual gifts to come back in. But the problem was is that the spiritual gifts, didn't match the corporate world, you know, it, it, it actually clashed <laughs> with the corporate world. So yeah. it caused a, a lot of uh, problems until, and I, and I had supernatural experiences that were just beyond, you know, belief. And so that caused other problems for me, Darius, because now I'm having these amazing experiences and nobody believes me, and they actually think I'm lying to them or going crazy. <laughs> so, these, and I started to feel like that, too. Yeah. Were these during yeah. the surgery or after the no, surgery at well, some point? Mm-hmm. Well, something happened uh, around the surgery with my grandmother dying and having an experience with her coming, uh, like kind of uh, premonitions or dreams ahead of the the operation that my grandmother would come to me to say goodbye as I woke up from surgery, but I didn't know she had died. And so it happened like over and over again for two weeks before the surgery. And I told my family, if anything happens to to grandma, I need to know about it because if I find out after I wake up from the surgery, there's going to be, I'm going to be so upset that it's going to cause a complication and I'm going to have to go back yes. and get it repaired or whatever. And, of course, my family thought I was nuts, but I, I just had to say it. It was so creepy. You know, it was like I'm dreaming about Grandma every day. And yeah. um, so the day before my surgery, she died. And my parents were not going to tell me. And my sister said, you better, <laughs> because there is just no way this is a coincidence. You know, so so that was the first thing that happened. But then after that, I had, uh, you know, probably the biggest supernatural experience of my life that put me on this 30-year course to where I am today to discover these new new things that are happening for us in the world. So okay. would you like to hear that story? Because I don't think I've ever told this publicly to anyone I think before. we would. Uh, I, would I'll, I'll <laughs> speak for everyone that they must say yes, probably. They must be saying yes right now. I can see the collective heads and hearts. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But, and, I, and, you know, it's funny because this story came to me this morning when I woke up, and I had uh-huh. – it was one of the original – supernatural experiences, but I really did bury it because uh, people just, mm. you know, wouldn't believe it when I told them, and and it was just such an impactful experience that it gives me chills even thinking about it now. So here's just a tiny bit of background to it is that I was married uh, for 10 years, my first husband, and unfortunately, he was a drug addict, and I went, and I was married through the Catholic Church, and I went through a lot of very hard years with him and uh, could not get him to to get help. And, of course, the Catholic Church's view on divorce is that you don't get it no matter what the situation is. And my family also, you know, was not uh, approving of a divorce. So I was in such desperate states by the 10th year because he was really destroying both of our lives. You know, it was just a matter of uh, the next car accident, you know, the next time Mm. he lost his job, that that he was going to take me down with him. And so I went on a vacation up at uh, the mountain. My parents had a cabin in the mountains. And 
of course, I'm from the Catholic religion, so while we were there on the first day, I prayed to Mother Mary, and I said, if I, if God approves of me leaving this man, because I have done everything I could, and I am so desperately unhappy, I, could you please send me a sign this week? If I don't get a sign by the end of this week, then I will stay with him if that's what God calls me to do. And so um, that first night, my husband went for a walk in the woods with the, our dog, but really, of course, he was going to do drugs. And um, I was sitting there on the porch, and my parents had these hummingbird feeders. And um, up in the mountains, there aren't very many flower sources, so she was getting like 15 hummingbirds around these feeders. And they were fascinating creatures, and they were so aggressive. They were, like, locking beaks and falling down on the ground and wrestling with each uh, other. And it was something I, I didn't that. expect. Yeah, it's yeah. Just very, I've never seen that. Yeah. It, it, it was fascinating. So um, they had to feed every 15 minutes. So they would come around, and then they would fly off, and then 15 minutes later they'd come around. So I decided to see if I could get close to them. And so I sat on the railing about six feet from the feeder. And I waited for them to come. And they came around, and at first they were kind of like wary of me, but I sat perfectly still. And they started feeding. So they all flew off, and then I went two feet closer to the feeder. And I just sat there, and I just was just enamored by the beauty of these little birds. So they came back, and it didn't seem like I bothered them at all, and they flew around the, the hummingbird feeder. And then all of a sudden, they all came and started flying around me and diving towards my head and face. And the buzzing, the humming of their wings was so loud in my ears. I was so afraid that maybe they were going to poke my face or whatever. But I was paralyzed, and I couldn't move. And then I just felt this energy, Darius, come in Mm. all around me, and like in this beautiful, loving energy. But... What happened next was just unbelievable. So the, there was 12 hummingbirds around me, and all of a sudden they formed a circle, eye level, all the way around my body, probably about three feet away from me. So they were very close, and you could hear that hum you know, from their wings. Oh. And I just sat there frozen, and I could see them from at the periphery of my head, you know, eyes on either side. And... So there was one directly in front of me, and then the one next to it on the left came up to my face an inch away, just looked at me, and then went back to its place in the circle. And each hummingbird all the way around, from left or behind my back all the way to right to back to that first hummingbird, did the exact same thing. Came, I could feel them right at my ears when they came up. I was like, oh, my gosh, are they going to you know, bite me <laughs> or whatever? But yeah. I just... I just was frozen. And so I looked at, at that one that was left that came, came, she came up to me. It was a female one. And she stared at me. And it was like looking into human eyes. The connection mm. was so incredible. And then all of a sudden, the 11 hummingbirds just disappeared. They just flew off. But it was almost like they flew into a dimension, like another dimension. They just disappeared. And I was left wow. with this one beautiful hummingbird just hovering three inches from my eyes and when I looked in her eyes I just continued and I don't know if this was a second or a, you know a minute or two minutes I felt a love energy that was so powerful and so pure and in that moment I knew that mm. everything everybody told me yeah. was wrong Hello and welcome, this is Darius Barzande, host of the Wealth Revolution, and if you enjoyed that snippet of one of our interviews, I'd invite you to just scroll down for one second and click the link down below. You're going to get access not only to a free gift that's going to double the power of your energy field in just 57 seconds, you're also going to get to be a part of the U.S. Revolution and listen to interviews just like the ones you heard that are happening live right now, daily where I interview some of the top healers, teachers, and masters in the field of energy transformation, energy healing, consciousness, ascension, and more. Plus, you're gonna get to be on live calls where you'll get your questions answered, you'll get to submit them via webcast, 
You'll even get to be one-on-one -on -one live on the phone and get energy healing help daily. It's all part of what we've been doing. So get up to date, click the link, join and be a part of it. And if you enjoyed this video or you like to see more of it, click the like button or subscribe. I always upload new content and I give weekly energy updates. So please let us know how we can serve you. And thanks for watching and being in my life. Much love.